Hey, Flimsy Lunch Tray here, back with our How to Map series as we look at the map Big Race. Today in part three, we're going to be looking at battleships as previously we've just talked about aircraft carriers and then just looking at the map as a whole. So there is a little bit of construction noise going on behind the uh, my apartment, so if you do hear a little bit of noise, I do apologize, but hopefully the music will help cover that. So in looking at uh, battleships today, um, as we've discussed, um, you know, this map is for tier two through tier five ships and yeah, I think it stops at tier five. I always forget. <laughs> I can't remember when it starts and can't remember where it ends. Uh, yeah, there's no tier six ships on this map, just tier two through tier five, I believe. Um, but as we've discussed previously, uh, the map big race, because we're at a lower tier, the map isn't so big. It's a relative, it's one of the smaller maps. Um, there's actually a couple of maps that are even smaller than this map. Um, but because of the tier that we are at and because of uh, the size of the map, uh, you tend to detect uh, enemy ships rather quickly um, or detect one another, allied and enemies. Um, and so in this instance, it tends to be battleships um, are the first ships that will be detected uh, on the map Big Race. Um, just because, um, you know, after you leave spawn, you know, maybe in just a minute uh, or so, you're already detecting um, an enemy battleship, or you yourself, if you're in a battleship, you're, you're being detected as your destroyers uh, run out in front and spot. So, um, when you're at this lower tier with battleships, you know, the, the battleships of this tier are not known for having fantastic concealment, um, not the most accurate guns um, per se. So, how do you use that to your advantage on? big race to uh, draw in close um, and be able to punish uh, the enemy. Um, so that tends to be uh, working the flanks. Now as we have discussed, um, I shared that there are two uh, kill boxes, um, as I'll, I'll phrase it as on this map. Um, so we'll just kind of draw it as a square. So you have this one and then you have this one and we'll connect it. Um, so these two tend to be kill boxes for any uh, class of ship, uh, destroyer, cruiser, battleships, and uh, heaven forbid, an aircraft carrier sitting in here. <laughs> uh, if you are, then something's terribly gone wrong. Um, but th these are not friendly zones uh, for battleships. Now, the only way that I would say that these zones are okay for battleships, let's say your team has um, pushed up along the northern edge of the map on the 910 line here. And then you've completely decimated the enemy team on this flank. And then now you're, you know, you're moving more of uh, this direction, right? Um, then it makes sense for you to begin to enter that kill box um, if the enemy team is kind of uh, left down here or vice versa. Let's say um, you, your team has completely wiped out the enemy flank over here. And then so now it's actually, it's okay for you as a battleship player um, to move up through uh, this way uh, along with your team and to combat the enemy team on the opposite flank. Um, vice versa, so on and so forth. Um, generally speaking, that type of maneuver that I'm speaking of doesn't happen in the, the, the first half of the battle. It's usually the last 10 minutes of the battle. You might find some sort of maneuver uh, like that. Um, so, when I draw these kill boxes, what I'm saying is basically, in most circumstances, generally speaking, uh, you as a battleship player should not be entering um, these kill boxes. Um, now, the, again, that varies upon what's happening, uh, how many enemy ships are left, and if it's like you're a brawling bat battleship, so let's say you're something like a Gnizer now, Scharnhorst, and it's like there's only a few enemy ships left, then, you know, by all means, you can engage as long as you're not doing so recklessly. I was playing on this map uh, last night um, and we completely dominated the enemy team. Um, we had all three cap. no, we had two of the caps, two of the three. And my teammates just kept killing themselves and they all killed themselves and we just went on points. I just came in, in the destroyer, parked here and won. Um, but my battleship players were in, and cruiser players were entering this kill box as the enemy team was kind of flanking, leaving this area. So they were getting killed uh, really quickly in that situation, even though like victory is ours. But I mean, you can still throw a game if all the all of your teammates die and your, yourself die before you uh, reach a thousand points. 
Uh, the clock does not keep ticking after y'all are dead. <laughs> so, so what's typical battleship positioning? I'm gonna leave these kill boxes up. Um, myself, let's say for example, I'm on this flank. So this is um, something like I might come down like this, uh, this kind of direction. Where I'm coming along through here, maybe it's not that drastic of a curve. Um, but I'm uh, just kind of hovering out here. Uh, this is I'll kind of do this in a cruiser too. Um, I don't feel uncomfortable as a battleship player, you know, getting in this area. So let's say this is like a position one. And basically, you're looking to punish if there's a dumb enough cruiser or battleship player who enters this kill box in the opening minutes of the match. Uh, being in this position means that you can um, punish them, one for it. And engage them and then you know if they are pushing in then you simply turn out and kite away um, with your guns um, still focusing in on them um, so you kind of get to play off when you're more over here versus over here you kind of you have a bit better coverage of this whole uh, kill box area and most torpedoes uh, at this tier they're not uh, tiers 2 through tier 5 they're not long-range torpedoes so Generally speaking, when you're further out, um, you don't have to worry as much about being torpedoed if you're out here. But it still means playing smart. You know, if there's a destroyer here, you need to play smart and not just at broadside. Um, you also have, let's say for this flank, um, this is the long distance travel flank, um, just because it takes uh, a good bit to get up. Um, closer towards this cap, you have a bit more distance uh, this way versus over here uh, per se. Um, but, you know, one it can just be kind of like going like this. Uh, again, uh, if you go into the kill box, uh, let's just say, for example, you went into the kill box, right? So when enemy battleships are moving along and they're coming up this way, they basically have your broadside. And then you also have, you know, the enemy team, um, you know, kind of doing some maneuver like this, as an example, let's say. And because you're moving there, then they get your crossfire, like, you know, through this way. So that's why, that's one reason why you don't move into the kill box, um, especially during the start, is just because the, uh, the positions that the enemy battleships um, have on you. So you just have to be uh, aware of that. Um, so going back to uh, the allied team here, um, this is really like your position one, I would say. I've also seen some... Um, Let's say there's a lot of battleships uh, on your team. You know, you can kind of, you could come up something like this. You know, you're, you're, again, you're focusing on sitting outside that kill box. You see how I'm kind of utilizing the islands here? Um, so you're just kind of, you're, you're waiting behind this line of, uh, I've been uh, referencing, kind of like something like that. Um, besides this like you kind of actually have to move up a little bit more to support your teammates But you're generally speaking the first half of the match really as a battleship player You're kind of playing behind this line generally speaking unless the enemy team just does something that um, alters your Decision course of what you have to do, you know, for example if they're the whole team decides to push this flank then yeah Then it makes sense you want to uh, trade uh, the map uh, you want to have good map control uh, since they're dominating enemy forces up here. So generally speaking, you have, this is your first positions. Um, we'll go ahead and draw the first positions for uh, enemy battleships as well. And how these islands are positioned, um, you also kind of have that, you you see how much just kind of sitting outside the kill zone, uh, the kill boxes, right? Um, a lot of the player interaction on this map is playing around uh, the kill box like who's going to be the first team to enter it and then players are unconscious uh, to a certain extent uh, a good portion of players i would say are unconscious that they're actually subconsciously they're, they're playing around these kill boxes now i see a lot of players that charge in maybe to a but particularly here uh, in this uh, b cap zone um a lot of players just kind of stay out of it. And you can kind of see that, you know, it's like, oh, if I go into this kill box, I'm going out into the open. 
really you're only fine destroyers typically um, in here at the first half of the battle. But here you have uh, the first positions, um, I would say. Um, a position two uh, would be more aggressive. So usually I always see uh, battleship players who, at least if they spawn like, you know, on this side, um, they'll of course favor this flank because they feel more comfortable. So you have this first position, uh, let's say, and then you also, you know, you could have a second position where you're trying to win the flank. Uh, oh, <laughs> that is, I don't know what I was drawing there. I was trying to draw two. Um, where they'll kind of come up along uh, this area. Now, when I'm a destroyer player, just FYI for you battleship players, um, if I spawn on this type of uh, flank, uh, my goal as a destroyer player, if I'm not, if I already have another destroyer player teammate who's contesting this cap, my goal, objective, is to win the flank. Because if I win the flank, let's say there's no battleships up here, I can push around and I can start throwing torpedoes into the side of the positions here. Uh, especially if there's no cruisers uh, lying around. And if there's an enemy destroyer who's also trying to win this flank, my goal and objective is to take him out so then this flank collapses so I can start like chiseling in, uh, you know, pushing, being able to push further back um, into uh, the team here. So, um, yeah, so that's kind of what you have that going on. Of course, um, you even have the position to, oh, <laughs> oh I dodged this at first. Um, where you go, you know, you advance through the cap. This is really the aggressive position. And you're not necessarily really going to have a, a third position, I would say, uh, for this map. Because the map is so, oh, <laughs> as I'm thinking about three, uh, because the map is so small, um, really at this point, it basically revolves, <laughs> I'm still drawing a number three because I see the two there. Okay, two, draw a two. Okay, awkward two, but it works. Um, you don't really, generally speaking, have a third position like uh, I've illustrated on bigger maps like uh, Sleeping Giant, like, um, oh, what's the other map that I did? Uh, Greece. Um, just because the map, it, it's so small. Um, and a lot of the second and third positioning depends upon what's happening on the enemy team's side. Are they falling apart or are they really strong in there? You know, then you, you don't really go for position number two if there's a lot of enemy force um, in this area. You kind of, um, you wait to see what's going to be the breaking point that helps you build to, for example, counter push. Um, and then like this, these positions, I would say when I'm getting down here for the battleship position number ones, this generally speaking happens after the first 10 minutes of the map where you have uh, battleship players like, okay, now we're going to uh, push up. It's kind of uh, like a, a breakout as it were. And then I'll cover the red team at the same time. Because this is, generally speaking, when you get to this point in the match, that you kind of, you tend to get a little more uh, brawling action happening. Um, because the, the first 10 minutes, you guys are, you know, kind of playing outside on these two lines, seeing what's going to happen. And then after you feel like there's a breakthrough or something, then you'll notice, um, you know, your, your teammates and enemy teammates, uh, enemy team, uh, will be... Um, getting more close uh, quarter combat action. Uh, you also, you know, you can have, you know, going down from, as I'm drawing from the enemy team's uh, perspective, as I just erased my kill box. Yeah, that's actually better than the last one. Maybe. Um, where you go, you kind of break out to this point. Um, there's also, you know, you can go that way, you can go more that way. I mean, again, depends on what's happening, where the enemy team is. Mission number two. Um, and then it tends to be more like 
something like this too. Now you may have noticed that I did not draw any lines uh, down in this area. Um, one of the problems I see, like when you're at this tier, tier two to tier five battleships, you are slow. You're, I don't, I don't think I know of any battleships that are fast at tiers two through five. Um, generally speaking, you're around that 20 knot zone. And because of that, you don't, if you put yourself in a position, let me just use an orange line, where you're coming more along this line as a battleship player, like you're just stuck way back here. And because you're back here, further away, you've got more islands between you and possible enemy ships up this way. So you can just kind of get yourself cornered in here. Like um, here, when you're in this zone, it's like, oh, if the enemy team's actually counter pushes, you can just uh, disengage, you can fall back. Right, you can go, oh, I'm gonna back out this way. I'm gonna back out this way. Oh, I'm gonna back out this way, right? That you ha use these islands to fall back um, if things are going south uh, for your team here. But when you go down in this area, you're stuck. Either you have to commit to the push, pushing into the enemy team, or you try to do like a disengage, but because you have this island over here, you're just giving them broadside. So that's why going down, especially into the bottom corner of the, the kill box is a really bad idea. You don't want to do that as a battleship player. You want to stay more on the top side of this kill box. And this kill box is kind of, generally speaking, you're free to move all around in it um, once you get to the latter half of the battle. Um, but you just got to be conscious um, of is there enemy destroyers lurking around, um, so on and so forth, because that can uh, really affect you. So I think this is really given, like generally speaking, I hope this gives you an idea of the positioning that you'll tend to find yourself as a battleship player. Um, the destroyers on this map, in my opinion, are really a deciding factor, whether you move up to position two or position uh, or further beyond that. Um, just because, you know, you're so slow, your maneuverability is so poor, you know, it's easy for uh, destroyer players to just yellow rush you um, around these islands. You know, if you're sitting here, you know, I'll just yellow up the back. I've done it, you know, especially up here because you have these islands that are a bit more forward in the center. So it can be really uh, dangerous um, if you all of a sudden find yourself on a flank where both your, you know, let's say two of the four of your enemy destroyers on this flank are dead, the other two are down this area, but the enemy team still has both their two destroyers up here. That usually means you've lost this flank, and now it's time to uh, fall back, um, reposition yourself. Um, so, because um, the strength of this map is when you're in a defensive position and the enemy team is offensively moving in, generally speaking, you will always have the advantage um, in holding a defensive position and the enemy team pushing into that. Um, of course, you know, it's possible to derp that, you know, you, you make a mistake, you play something wrong. I mean, you can, I can say, you know, defensive position, um, you hold advantage versus a team pushing in offensively on you. But if you're sitting broadside to that team pushing in offensively on you, then they have the upper hand over you. Um, so that's why angling um, is important. Um, so let's talk about how... Um, battleships interact with other classes on this map. Um, when you're at tier, uh, first let's start with carriers. So carriers on this map, the only carriers tier you're gonna see is tier four. Um, so with that, because your speed is not the best, your maneuverability is not the best um, at this tier as a battleship player, um, the CVs can have um, a lot of fun um, with you especially since some battleships don't even have AA at these lower tiers. Um, you can just be kind of screwed. If a wise uh, carrier player on this map uh, will know how to effectively deal with an enemy battle, uh, deal with against you as a, uh, when you're in a battleship, um, especially if you're isolated and alone on the flank. So if you're just a battleship sitting down here, you let's say you have one to show around but your cruisers and rest of your battleships are you know they're more up this way then that carrier player if he's wise enough he's going to come uh, focus in on you and because the map's so small ideally he can have a good return time um with getting the next flight squadron in on you um but that's you know as we talked about if you're they're more positioned 
and more of like these forward positions, not sitting in the back of J1 or J10 or A1, uh, right? So, so yeah, so you you rely on being with cruisers um, and possible other battleships, you know, that do have AA to help hold yourself against uh, enemy carriers. There's just not a lot you can do, um, and to a certain extent, most aircraft carrier players at tier four, um, if they're not seal clubbing, um, a good portion of them are inexperienced and are just trying to figure out carriers for the first time. So you have that to yourself as an advantage if you're a competent battleship player, um, which is good, just average. Uh, with other enemy battleships, you know, we've I pretty much already kind of covered that, you know, talking about these positions. You just have to be mindful of, um, did I say a Sharnhorst on this map? I don't know why I said Sharnhorst on this map. Oh, um, I know why I said that. Uh, the current ranked uh, Bronze League. Um, you, you can, this map has been used for tier six and tier seven ships. Um, <laughs> uh, just because the Bronze, uh, that the ranked league uh, at that tier, when you don't have that as many players, it's okay to have fewer players on this map at a higher tier. So that's why I was uh, just that came across my mind for saying a Sharn horse. Um, so I guess you you can be exposed if you're playing ranked. You'll find tier six, tier seven uh, ships on this map. But generally speaking, when we're talking about co-op, we're talking about random battles. It's going to be tier five or lower. Um, yeah, so so know that this information does also apply if you're currently in the Bronze League in ranked uh, as of update 0.10.5. I'm recording this video, or if they ever do another ranked in the future uh, on this map at those tiers, tier six to tier seven. These things, uh, same things still apply, but you will find more speedy ships um, at those tiers, tier six to tier seven. But generally speaking, you know, as we talked about with um, this is where you're typically going to engage enemy battleships. Um, the only way that this really shifts is if an enemy team has committed all the resources uh, assets to one flank, and then, you know, say half your team went this way and your other half went this way, and then you're actually going to move up past this kill box and kind of um, the map control will kind of shift. So ideally, if the enemy team is pushing all their assets this way, your team up here is kind of falling back. And so then the enemy team's kind of got, they control the upper half. And then your other half, your team is moving more this way. And then now you control the bottom half. Um, that's ideally how it should work when uh, an enemy team puts all the resources on one. You want to retain an even amount of map uh, control because the more map control you lose, uh, the worse off you are um, as a team. So again, remember how um, when we looked at part one, uh, all these islands, you have these tapered edges. You, you, you know, you kind of have the high point, and then it's just tapered along uh, the edges. Uh, meaning, as a battleship player, you can get volleys off over uh, these edges, so you might catch out uh, an enemy battleship cruiser completely off guard because you're kind of concealed. You're about to break cover, but you send that full uh, armor-piercing volley over one of these uh, edges, uh, these tapered edges of the islands. You can really devastate uh, <laughs> and catch uh, an enemy cruiser battleship off guard if uh, RNG is favoring you and doesn't give you the most wackiest dispersion you've ever seen, uh, which I think we've all experienced that, uh, especially at these tiers. Uh, cruisers. Uh, cruisers, um, a wise cruiser player will play a lot off these islands. So when they are out in the open, they should, they should be, theoretically, uh, full throttling, uh, especially if you're on a battleship and um, you can easily pick them off. Because uh, a cruiser player who is sitting more still as definitely uh, can get wrecked uh, by battleships on this map. Um, so when you are a battleship player, um, you're often a lot at this tier. Again, it kind of comes with the player experience. Um, you know, there are newer players at these tiers. Um, you will find a lot of broadside opportunities, typically. So I'll be looking for those as a battleship player, especially on cruisers, because you can just absolutely... Uh, devastate uh, enemy cruiser um, who's not paying attention um, as they break uh, between islands um, if they do island hopping uh, moving around on the map um, or if you get someone you know let's say something like uh, I was just trying to think of a cruiser at tier 5 that has smoke screen 
you know, for example, they, they push up, they want to get closer because they don't have as great as range, you know, and then you can blap them as they slow down uh, popping their smoke screen. Um, so just be looking for those opportunities. Um, and also be in mind uh, that there are cruiser players, there are cruisers uh, at these tiers that have torpedoes. Um, so if you know, you have a good mindset of what cruisers do and what cruisers don't have torpedoes as a battleship player, um, you might find a cruiser player uh, rushing you just to dump his torpedoes off because you're um, at tiers two to tier five, you're slow, you're not very maneuverable as a battleship, and you're, you're dealing with more dreadnought BBs, like kind of more World War, uh, First World War uh, battleships. So um, you just have to be mindful um, of how you're interacting with cruisers and also especially with how you interact with destroyers on this map. Um, because even at these lower tiers, um, there are a good, good good handful of destroyers that have a decent speed. Um, and they can use it, utilize these islands, um, use, utilize smoke screen to draw in closer on you as a battleship player um, and really uh, put the herd on you. Um, like cruiser players, wise destroyer players will utilize the islands um, to island hop to draw in the distance. Because, you know, for example, a destroyer player here can really just, you know, hug these islands um, and really move up almost uh, undetected um, to a certain extent uh, to break through and put the hurt uh, on you. Because um, that's one of the, you know, you have the advantage of how I was talking about how all these islands, you know, they're tapered. But if you're a battleship player sitting here, and let's say you're, you know, firing sh shots here, but an enemy destroyer sneaks up and then he just dumps a bunch of torpedoes into you, um, then that tapering of the island uh, didn't work to your advantage. So you have to be aware of, oh, I'm sitting here. This cap's being taken. Oh, the cap's now been taken. Uh, no one detected what ship was in there. It's, it might be a destroyer. Well, since he took this area and contested, it means that destroyer player might push up and push more into my area. So I need to be uh, aware. Maybe I pop a spotter plane if I, you have it or you're asking for uh, reconnaissance, um, or just be aware that there could be a destroyer player pushing in on your position. Um, so yeah, so destroyer players, again, at this tier, you, there's some really good destroyer players um, you'll find on Big Race, and there's also destroyer players that are really bad um, at these tiers. Um, so a lot of that um, on the bad side is just destroyer players, maybe they're learning destroyer ship for the first time, or they're just newer to the game. Um, so it's kind of, it's, it's kind of interesting because when you got these tiers, it's a kind of a wild card, you know, it's like, oh, is this enemy I'm going up against? Are they, uh, really good? Are they, have they played, you know, tier eight, tier 10 ships? And all of a sudden now they're back here at low tier, or is this a newer player? Um, so there's kind of that fun factor when you're at these tiers of, um, you don't know if the player is going to just completely derp or if he's going to do an awesome move and just wreck you. <laughs> so for, it's kind of exciting to me, uh, to be honest, when I am playing the lower tiers because you also run into a lot less gimmicks at these uh, tiers versus, you know, tiers eh, seven and up. Um, so yeah, so just be mindful of uh, how just warrior players, how cruiser players uh, can be moving around because honestly they can almost be your biggest threat uh, on this map um, just because of island hopping and uh, with torpedoes um, and if you're too far forward uh, you overextended yourself and you have no teammates to support you then you can be sure that that cruiser player or destroyer player most likely the destroyer player is just going to yellow rush you um, and get all his torpedoes off on you because it's, it's fun to do those type of things so um, in conclusion, just be mindful to stay outside of these kill boxes the first half of the battle. That's uh, generally the first 8 to 10 minutes. Um, you should not be in here. Um, you kind of get a handle of what's how your team's doing, um, how the enemy team is positioned, how they're holding up. And then when the deciding time comes, you know, then at some point you tend to have to push as a battleship player um, in making that decision. But know that... Um, Holding a flank um, is important because once you, like, you know, if the enemy team here, if they completely win this flank, let me switch to a different color. If they completely win, like, this flank, like, all of this is enemy team, 
Then they just simply get to push along these islands um, and throw fire in at you uh, from these directions. And you're kind of screwed. And the vice versa is the same. You know, if your team wins, moves up and uh, the enemy team, they get kind of screwed. They don't have, I mean, you have this island, but this island's really nice because of how long um, and wide it is. And this one's a bit more uh, circular. So, um, yeah. So I hope you found uh, this video helpful in talking about battleships on the map of the Grace. Um, it's a fun map. Uh, I like it. But the, the biggest thing that for you to be aware of is just be mindful of the kill boxes and don't rush into the kill boxes too soon because um, if you do as a battleship player you're likely i'm um, gonna die um, and won't make it so if you liked today's video give it a thumbs up if you didn't give it a thumbs down subscribe if you want to see more and if you haven't subscribed i really appreciate it as we continue to grow the community if you have questions thoughts uh drop them below in the comments and i'll respond to you there so until next time take care